I often get asked what happens when mediation fails in the workplace. So today, I'm going to offer some guidance on when you should walk away. And if you stay to the end, I'm going to give you some advice on how to think about what your exit strategy might be post-mediation. For the purposes of this video, I want to be clear about what I mean by fail. By fail here, I mean that the parties do not come to an agreement. Now, maybe most of you are thinking like, yeah, duh, that is what fail means. But in mediation, that is actually not how I typically define a failure. Because for me, if the parties reach an agreement, but it doesn't meet the party's interests, or someone feels pressured, or it's falling apart three weeks later, that's a failure. So for me, sometimes it's not a failure when they don't reach an agreement. But for this video, because I suspect that most people who are watching this, when they're thinking failure, they're thinking no agreement. And that's how I'm defining it for this video. So with that in mind, let me share with you four reasons why you might walk away. In other words, four reasons why if you're in a mediation, you might say this isn't working and I'm moving on. So number one, you have made an assessment that your BATNA is better than anything you're gonna get in this mediation. So, what do we mean by BATNA? So, in the world of mediation and negotiation, there is this term called BATNA, which means best alternative to a negotiated agreement. So your BATNA is the thing you're going to do if you don't reach an agreement. And when you're in a mediation, if that thing you're going to do absent a mediation is a better way to meet your interests than an agreement, then you should walk away. Um, and so what that means, practically speaking, is that when you're in a mediation, you should have some sense of what your BATN is. Because if you don't know your BATN, it's going to be really hard to make an assessment of whether to reach an agreement or not. Now, a second reason why you may walk away is that after spending some time in the mediation, you have made the good faith assessment that the other side is simply not there to compromise at all. In other words, they went into this mediation either with a misunderstanding of what the process is or in bad faith. Mediation is not a process that vindicates a right. And it's not a process where at the end you will say something like, I'm right and they're wrong, or they're right and I'm wrong. The very nature of mediation is that the parties are there to focus on something that can meet their interests well, but that shows some flexibility, some willingness to compromise. And if you are stuck the entire time and getting the sense like, I'm willing to make some changes, but they're not, then staying in the mediation is kind of a waste of time. Related to this, right, a third reason for leaving a mediation is you've decided that actually what you want is a vindication of right. In other words, you are not looking for a compromise, but you want someone to tell you you're right and they're wrong. Now, that's always risky in a conflict, but to the degree that that is your purpose or your goal, you're probably in the wrong process if you're in a mediation. Because the people who vindicate rights are judges and juries, not mediators. Now, a fourth reason why you may walk away from the mediation is not necessarily because of your BATNA, the other party, or yourself, but a sense that somehow you are not satisfied with the mediator or mediators. Um, and this is always a high cost and risky thing to do. Um, but I have seen this happen in some situations where, bizarrely, the one thing that the parties can agree on is that they're dissatisfied with the mediator. Now, to be honest, sometimes it's because the mediator hasn't done a good job. And frankly, sometimes it's because the mediator is doing a really, really good job and therefore is actually pissing off all the parties. Um, but I know that at least in a few cases, when I was acting as an advisor to one of the two sides, that I actually have made the recommendation to say, I, I think this is the kind of case that can be mediated, but I think this mediator isn't doing a great job. So I think of one situation where 
we went into it, frankly, a little bit skeptical because someone within an organization had been selected to be the mediator between two parties in that organization. Now, that in itself is not necessarily bad, but one of the things I learned early on is that the person who had been selected had absolutely no training in mediation, didn't even quite understand their mandate, didn't set any ground rules, and consistently violated principles of neutrality and informed consent. And when all of that was happening, right, it became clear to me that my client, the one I was advising, was in a bad situation continuing in this mediation, um, and that we needed to find our way out and see if we could actually start the mediation again, but with a new mediator. So if you make this decision that the mediation is failing and I'm stepping away, it's really important that before you do that, you think about what is your next step. Now, that's always going to be very contextual, but broadly, right, I would say there's kind of three things you could do. One is what I would call escalate. So depending on the context, that might be a lawsuit of some sort, or maybe if it's internal to an organization, it might be bringing it to a, a supervisor or somebody else. Now, escalation can be really the right thing to do if you want to vindicate your right, but it's also highly risky. The second is, right, you concede, or what we call lump it in our field. So you basically are like, okay, I lost this one. Now, my sense is that if you're prepared to concede, um, it's a little bit strange to end the mediation because you could concede in the context of the mediation. The third thing is that you just say, I'm going to do nothing. And uh, I've actually seen this happen in many situations when I'm advising someone. The mediation fails and kind of the parties go back and just keep on living their life. Um, I always find this to be awkward. Uh, but somehow parties sometimes decide to do this, right? But whatever it is, I think it's important for you to know what am I going to do um, if I walk away from this mediation? So to recap, here are four questions to ask before you walk away from a mediation. One, is your walk away, is your BATNA better than anything that you can get in this mediation? Two, have you made the decision that the other side of the mediation is simply unwilling to compromise at all? Three, have you decided that for whatever set of reasons, now that you're in the mediation, you're unwilling to compromise and what you're looking for is a vindication of right? Or four, are you somehow dissatisfied with the way the mediator is conducting himself? Okay, so to continue your learning, watch this next video, which is why silence is powerful when negotiating a deal. And before you leave, I'd be really grateful if you could subscribe to my channel like this video, and ring the bell so you never miss new content. Okay, don't let this channel fail. Subscribe and keep watching.